Hey everybody, welcome to Aero Barrage War. <clears throat> In the past, I have done separate videos on putting together defense teams for specific war types, and I uh, often talk through dissecting defense teams, and I am going to do, I'm going to mix all of that into my attack videos. So uh, I'll have a section of my attack videos where I talk about building your own defense team, and, uh, you know, then that will lead into a better conversation on how to dissect the enemy's defense teams. Something that I have not mentioned up to this point, because it's, it's a, it's a one-off part of strategy. It's not something you can count on, but I was, before I started the video, I was looking around at teams and just looking at points. And I think I'm going to start by attacking this team here because it's worth 57 points. And this person most likely left their minion defense team in here. So this is something that I look for is people who, players who, you know, forget to change their defense team. It means this defense team is not optimized to this current war. So that's a huge mistake in the strategy and then there's a couple other just big problems with this team for one they have a very passive tank at slow speed their tank is a primary healer and um, they do it does he does give cleanse but he'll probably be dead before he has a chance to cleanse anything all enemies get Minus 34% defense. Uh, you know, that's decent, but your tank has to be threatening. So tanks are either a liability to your defense or they're an asset to your defense. There's a few tanks like the glass cannons that are wild cards. They, they're something that somebody needs to strategize to overcome, but... You know, like Kill Hair. Um, right now, I'm using Guardian Panther. She sort of fits into that category where she's not a great tank, but if you set her off and she's at fast speed, she prevents your defense from uh, being able to uh, buff themselves. And she does good damage. So, uh, you know, this tank here. I'm going to hit attack just to reserve the the team. That team there, they do that that um tank is a liability to the team. I can throw tiles right into the tank and not have to worry about any consequences. So it gives me the ability to correct a bad board, which is by far in a way the most important thing in this game. Aside from getting, you know, overpowered heroes and leveling up your troops and, you know, all of these other things, there are some very basic fundamental principles in here that really throw all that other stuff out the window. And it usually revolves around mana. So let's see here. Enemy info first. Okay, so who do we have to worry about here? If we take a team without minions... This is not minion war, so Scotty basically doesn't do anything. I mean, she does some damage, but not a lot. Then we've got Bae Young. You don't see uh, him very often. He deals 320, which is, in, in today's game, 320 is a decent amount of damage if you hit all at fast speed. And he only hits one. So the target gets minus 75% accuracy for two turns. Set minus 75% is a lot, but two turns is not for very long, so you can just ride that out. And the target gets minus 75% decrease in healing. So that is good. This is Aero Barrage War, and when you're structuring your own defense, you need to um, pick out all of your heroes that prevent healing, So, which is something I forgot to do on on this one because I've been busy the last couple of days and I 
Um, I threw in a sort of a random hero compilation that I thought would do well because it did well in previous wars and it it's not doing well. So um, we, what did I just do? I'll keep looking here. So the biggest threat on this team is Zagrog, and Zagrog bypasses defensive buffs. So, and let's see, caster gains 20% mana if any defensive buffs were bypassed. So you really don't want to buff your your defense. You don't want to focus on buffing your defense. This team, it's worth a lot of points. They have good troops, but there's not good synergy there's just not a, a lot going on here so there's not a lot to worry about because zagrog is my number one target then i'm going to pick a attack team that singles out or that um, gives me the best ability to take out zagrog without um, without allowing him to use his skills and so I think I'm gonna go with this team this team has two blues which will help for tile damage and there's no minions so I don't need to worry about let me bring up the other team here uh, let's see troops look good okay so, blue against Zagrog, red against Mother North. I'm not particularly worried about Mother North at this point. She's the the meta has moved beyond reviving heroes. It's and that's really because of the speed of the game. When the game was slower than you know reviving heroes, when you have when you have a slow hero on the wing, it takes a very long time for them to to be set off so uh, at this point usually a team is so strong that if the middle heroes are gone then you're going to be able to overwhelm mother north pretty quickly so i don't really focus on her too much anymore um, i'm not worried about taking yellow against this team because the tank's not particularly dangerous. I really just want to be able to use a team that I probably won't be able to use anywhere else in here, just because of the bad synergy with the defense. Now, if I didn't have these heroes, this is another thing that I'm going to start adding to this, is how, what kind of a defense, I mean, I'm sorry, what kind of an attack team could I put together using non um you know meta heroes so um in this team if you're using more basic heroes i would say the the things that i'm focusing on on attacking this team are i don't want minions and i don't want um uh, defensive buffs so as far as color scheme goes I would focus on red so you could use someone like Tyr he's a little bit older as a you know attacking hero in here and let's move down here into more of the heroes of the month in season one you could easily swap in Russell, Zagrog, you know, in those, the reds that I have attacking here. They would work perfectly fine as snipers. In this team, in my war attack teams, those on, so the breakdown for the teams is I have an attack team and I have a defense team on my squad. Let's call it a squad use some military terms here so you have a squad you have two teams on your squad you have an attack team and a defense team your attack team has for me usually has two hitters or one usually assists the other with defense down or attack up 
and then a minor uh, defensive hero that usually increases damage as well. And then on the defense team, you have your primary healer and a sort of secondary attacker. So these teams can function sort of independently with a little bit of attack and a little bit of defense on both the red and the blue side. This way, if I'm short tiles in one color, I can still play and um, and so I look at, when I look at substituting heroes, I'm looking at the positions, I'm looking at the roles that they fill on the team. So with Tetashiri and Zenda, I am looking at damage dealers. So here I have Russell or Zagrog would probably be good. Um, again, I like to keep things fast, so I would not use Kagan. Um, Anzog would be a, would be good in the number four position. If well, I mean he's a healer. Yeah, if you're really comfortable with the damage that you deal, then you could put um, Anzog in that number four position as a secondary healer in your strong color. Um, Ruffian and Nergib would be really good in the attack team portion here. And let's move a little bit farther down here into the four stars. Um, Sun Chang Zing would be able to replace Tetashiri pretty easily here. She does really good defense down and, you know, stack her with maybe well I would want somebody who's a little bit faster than Cillian um, probably Junaid would be really good to stack with uh, with Sun Chang Zing if we're going a little more basic on an attack team uh, you could go Guardian Falcon and Scarlet the red defense down so target nearby enemies get minus 54 percent defense against fire which you know you hit first with guardian falcon and then a follow-up hit with scarlet does pretty good damage you know the using these heroes the reason why i don't swap these in and go into this fight right now is it's it's the best chance you have to win if you don't have stronger heroes and this war is very close so the next time that we're in a war where we've already won by the time i'm attacking i'm going to start swapping in these heroes that i'm talking about and show you how to use them um, by doing it myself and then of course you've got your off colors you need a strong healer you could go i'm not sure who the stronger healers are in blue, maybe I would probably use Kirill as the number four position as opposed to the number one position here because of his, he, you know, you use him primarily for the defense down or the attack up, depending on um, which costume, which version you're using. So there's a lot of options. The most important thing is that you're putting your attack team together, filling each position with a hero that's the appropriate hero for that position. So, oh, did somebody already take that team out? Yeah, they did. Who was that? Okay. Um, yeah, that's the problem with talking too long is people, um, you know, they jump in and do their hits. So let's see if there's, here's another team where it looks like they left their, um, their minion team in there with Scotty. So you can always take advantage of a hero like Scotty if it's not a minion war. Okay, let's see. 
All right, I'm going to pause this for a second. I'm going to look at points and um, so we can jump into a battle pretty quick here. Okay, we are going to attack this team here. This team, so let's do a quick analysis here. This is Aero Barrage War, which means the defenses that are the most dangerous are the ones that are going to prevent your ability to heal because you, you can't go long term in this war uh, you need something that can deal damage pretty quick and you know if, if the defense doesn't have anything that prevents heal then you take two healers and you're usually pretty good but Painulite is a big threat here because Painulite um, all enemies get minus 50% decrease for any healing received for four turns plus Painulite has stone skin so that means that we want to focus primarily on Penulite. Now, I'm not, I don't even know how to say his name. He is a definitely a threat. He does bl he gives blind, and he's fast, but he's on the wing, so you know you can't really you not I'm not really going to put together something to take him out first. The wing heroes are usually. You're not usually not going to focus your attack on the wings. So another fast hero with the costume Gef John destroys all minions, deals a lot of damage to the target nearby enemies. Again, she's very dangerous, but uh, I'm just not going to take minions and I'm not going to focus on the wings here. So I'm going to take a purple team, purple attack team. I need three heroes that. that um, are purple for this team because they have two yellow flanks and Narcissa is I mean, her artwork is probably my favorite she's probably my favorite hero in the game from an artwork perspective she's fast but she deals damage and for that reason I don't know that she's the best tank here Honestly, I've never fought Narcissa as a tank. All enemies get minus 34% attack. I can see why you'd put her in here because she deals damage, she's fast, and let's see, the passive reduces mana increase by special skills by 50%. Okay, so I'm not going to use a mana up team here, but we will not probably timed out here, so... Let's go back in here, and this is the team that I'm going to use. Um, Leidenbrock gives some cleanse, and um, Cleopatra prevents status ailments, so that would help with the blind, that would help with... Um, Help with the blind, it would help with the healing reduction. And so we have Louis that also dispels, gets rid of the stone skin on Penulite, which is beneficial. Um, now, this team has no heal, so you want to focus on using your best um, uh, fiend heroes when you're going against a team that has no healer. So Lu Bu is a great option here because Lu Bu is going, if he fires once, then Penulite doesn't get stone skin anymore. Um, there's not a lot of buffs on this team actually. This is mostly an ailment team, so um, that's what we got. Let's uh, let's look at the troops here. Uh, I want probably the twenty-nine troop on Lubu. Don't need that much mana gain on a fast hero. Wow, how long is this thing? Like 10 seconds? Lu Bu, 
Lubu. I have Lubu in the assist position because um, the uh, not Lubu, but uh, Louis, because the 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 spell. Okay, so let's see if I do this purple match right here, then that will actually combo into a yellow match there. But if I do this, I have to be careful not to hit the purple one or it'll do the match. If I do that, it'll also combo into the purple and that's probably a better use. That's gonna not screw up my tiles as much. Let's see, if I do the other way, the purple, then that will sort of leave three yellows stranded. Or if I do this, it's going to get rid of the yellows and the purples at the very top of the board, which are the hardest ones because they come in from the bottom, of course. So that's what we're going to start with. Now, I'm going to make this purple match in the middle and hopefully some yellows come up, which would help for the left or the right side of the board here. No yellows coming up. Okay. We need yellows. This is going to go off anyways, so... Let's see what would be best at this point. Probably... Maybe give us a chance at some yellows. Yeah, that's good. Because we do need some heal. Yeah, let's dragon bomb this. Take the one yellow. Now we're gonna have to absorb another shot from Narcissa here, but this sets us up pretty well for the follow on. And we haven't hit anybody else, so. Yeah, so we got degraded pretty badly there, but because of the way the team is composed, I get that a nice heal, which brings me back to full power and now prevents status ailments. So I am going to, yeah, let's just go ahead and fire these. Now let's get ready to fire Lubu here. Take the shot from the arrow barrage. And now I'm gonna use Leidenbrock Now it's going to be almost impossible for the defense to win at this point because they don't have any heal and they've got fiends. So Cleopatra, if you notice, I, in every attack I, I say she's the strongest healer in the game and that's because not only does she have a, a deep, deep heal, but that her ability to block status ailments also heals you 240 hit points every time they try to put a status ailment on you. So it negates a lot of the damage that you end up taking from any shot. When, if they try and put an ailment on you, it, you heal 240 hit points. So that was a good opening hit. Let's see where else we want to go. I believe this team is worth good points. So let's see. We have Elizabeth. Doesn't hit hard. Um, leaves fiends. We have um, minions from Mother North, but there's nobody that takes advantage of that. Richard is not a big threat. I would say... 
Akrog is probably their best um, their best hero other than Domitia. 400 damage to the target is a lot, but target nearby enemies receive poison damage, which is substantial, cleanses status ailments from the caster and nearby allies. Domitia is probably their best hero, and Akrog is probably second, so I am going to attack them with a yellow team. They have a revive hero, so they do dispel, which makes Dabria less effective, but I think because they do fiends from um, Elizabeth, I'm going to take Arco, which means I'm taking this team. And let's see here, the, let's swap this so that we put the Cyclops onto actually, you know what, I'm going to go back. Usually I put the 24 on the healer, but Leo is pretty fragile. Yeah, that looks good. The order doesn't mean anything on my team. There's nobody who does effects for the people next to them. So if um, Akarog rearranges our order, it doesn't really matter. Oops, okay, let's fight. So we're taking yellows to try and do increased damage against their tank. And because Domitia is probably their best hero. So I'm going to start with the yellow match right here on the side because I want to get rid of the yellows that are closest to the top of the board. They're the hardest ones to, to use later, and that could set us up with a yellow match at the bottom, which it did. Now, let's see, we want green, so I'm going to take the yellow match on the right instead of in the middle to give us the possibility of a follow on green, which we did not get. Quite all right though. So let's ghost up the middle. Taking some fiends, but that's fine because Arco's almost ready to go. Um, let's see, any buffs? Not really. Okay, so let's focus on this side of the board and get rid of Mother North. Now we'll set off Arco just to get rid of our fiends. He actually flips the fiends into minions, gives minions, and then heals based on how many minions we have. So you can see that deep overheal there. That's why I love Arco so much. And yeah, at this point, it's the game's the match is over. We're gonna give defense down, and then Jove is gonna end this battle. So, I forgot, if, if, uh, if I didn't have the heroes that I have, I would have, um, just to, to talk a little more specifically, Elizabeth is someone you need to counter because her fiends are the, in my opinion, they're the worst fiends in the game. There are some, I mean, the worst f for you as the attacker. There are some powerful fiends at this point, but that 24% mana reduction is uh it's a killer if you sit there with fiends on for six turns you will probably lose the battle because you're gonna fall way behind 
So, but there are heal, there are a few healers in uh, in the four star range that get rid of fiends like. Can't remember her name, and I don't think I leveled her up, but that was just because I already have in five star I have fiend removers, but um, Voluptus, she destroys all fiends, cast her nearby allies. There's also. Wang Yan Ji destroys all fiends from all allies. Um, Wang is a better healer than uh, Voluptus. So if you have those, level those up um, because the fiend removal is important. You always want to have that option if you have if you're facing them. Um, if you're facing fiendish enemies. Okay, so at this point I don't think there's a lot of teams that are high on the points. Mm, okay, so we have Ludwig here. We want to block Ludwig. A good hero to block Ludwig is um, Melosi or um, uh, Sabina. So in the four star range, Sabina, costume Sabina, will prevent a hero from being able to uh, use their special skills. Let's see, Zhuge Liang is slow, but has fiends and gives counterattack. So that is something that can't be ignored. Because he's slow, He's, they're depending really on Ludwig, so their synergy, synergy here is Ludwig firing and then continuously firing Zhu Liang. So they'll be covered in minions that do counterattack. I believe he does counterattack. Does they do counterattack, right? Yeah. Okay, so let's look at the teams that we have that can break that synergy. This first team up here would be, with yellows, would be strong against Ludwig, but there's nothing in my specials here that's going to break that synergy. So I cannot use that team. Lepiota is good for breaking the synergy. Um, and then this team, Team 4, is a non-direct damage team. So... I have Sobek who bypasses counterattack, and Lepiota who ghosts and then does damage from the ghosting, and Guardian Hippo who bypasses the Riposte as well. So let's look and see if there's any other Riposte teams here. This is a uh, team's worth low points. I don't see any other repost based teams. And so this is a good place to use that blue team. Um, So, we're not strong against, uh, the blue is not strong against either yellow or purple, but I think the ability to, um, to not be affected by that counterattack just in case this battle draws out is probably worth it to bring this team I think what I'm saying is I think that the synergy of m the strategy of my team can overcome the synergy of their team and I don't need the color stack 
Lepiota, King Ghost, um, Ludwig to get rid of the taunt. Yeah, let's try this. Two purples against the, the yellows is good. Let's see how this works out. All right, so we've got purples. We don't really have blues. So if we do that recommended match at the top, that is going to, that is not going to set off the purples in the lower left corner. And the blue at the top is already a match. So I, it means I won't mess it up if I have a cascade. So I think All right, we're going to start I don't want to cascade the right side and cause a match well, no, the only match that, that might cause is going to be purples on the lower left. So we are going to take this higher one first, bring purples up a little bit, and then, okay, now, I if I match purples in the lower left, I can either throw them into Ruffian or I can throw them into Zuj. So either way is going to help set up, you know, combos. But if I do, I throw them into Zeus, it's going to throw my yellow, my purple tile way up to the top. But that's okay because I already have two matches, so let's just go ahead and do that. I'd rather take the, do the damage against Zeus there. Now we're going to take our third purple match. And of course we're going to do get our defense started let's see who's the biggest problem right now let's just go ahead and ghost Ludwig right now take our blue matches so we've had a lot of purple matches not a lot of blues so our purple team is is right now, it's just keeping us alive. Um, I'm gonna ghost Zuj because he's close to firing and the purple damage should be enough to kill. What's his name over there? Okay. Come on, Blues. she's firing anyways and I need to get blues but we can take purples Zeus fires. No, let's ghost him. And we'll take our blue match. Okay, finally we can fire up Hippo. Let's 
take our purple here. Wow, this was a really slow time getting our blues, but Hippo is going to deal damage. The only one that Hippo doesn't damage is Zuz. Um, let's take these blues, get Sobek up. I'm going to actually wait because I want Zuz to come back. Oh, we lost the mana. Okay. Well, I'm just going to have to kill him with Lepiota and take the blue match ghosted there and fire these two. Now, now let's just shuffle up the board. Those two just don't have the, the power between the two of them to be a threat to the team that I have left here. Okay, well, I don't want to say that was close because I left, you know, I, I ended with a lot of uh, heroes left, but it was a lot closer than it looked because of how long it took to get blue matches there. That could have gotten out of control if I didn't eventually get those blue matches. So, let me look around. I'll be right back. All right, here we have a... They've, they left their minion team in, so this clearly is an anti-minion team. They've got Grimble as their tank, they've got Uraeus, and they've got Scotty in here. That synergy is great for um, minion war. It doesn't help them at all in, um, in Arrow Barrage. Vanda helps a little bit with the health steal, but I'm going to take just my generic team in here this team because they don't have any synergy going on that is threatening so this is a weak healer that I've got but they don't have a lot of ability to do a lot of damage I guess they have no healer so everyone on there does some damage Yeah, uh, let's just try it. Okay, this is a great starting board. Now I just need to figure out how to not mess it up. And uh, let's see, I could take the green match. And this would bring the yellow up. That'll allow me to make a dragon bomb and another yellow match right here. Now, uh, let's see. I am going to make the green matches on the left side of the board, and so I need to get rid of some of those heroes so I can ghost on that side. And El Nadaha is more dangerous than Scotty, especially because Scotty takes double damage from greens. So we'll do two green matches by doing this. Unfortunately, that did set Scotty off, but without any minions, we don't get any stacks. Now we have a heal. I'm going to kill them with Stain Tongue. That gives us the yellows that we need here. At this point, we just need to make that last match. And we're 
good. Doesn't look like we're gonna get tiles that I can throw into him, so let's just let Stain Tongue do his thing. Okay. We now have, let's see, I have two anti-minion teams and they've got some real juicy targets when it comes to minion teams. I will always pick on a team that has Papyrus because he puts minions on his entire team and, um, and doesn't really do a whole lot. Plus this team has two healers on the left side. For one thing, you don't need two healers here. Um, Alexandrine is a waste of a hero on this team, especially at the wing position. She has absolutely no role on this team. So Arco, if you want healers, Arco is gonna be more than enough. The um, Julia, should um, swap out Alexandrine for a blue hitter. Let's see. Obacon. Counter nearby allies attack, counter attack. That's gonna go off. Hmm. Let's see. I need Dispel. And this is going to be a Grimble team. But I also need to spell. Let's see here. I'm looking at team seven. This is my new Milady de Winter with a lot of mana boosting. Um, Seshad is on that team just for that purpose, for the dispel. This does not have Grimble on it, that's what I'm looking at, is who could I replace and put Grimble on the team? Okay, so I paused it for a second there so I could think this through without taking up a bunch of your time. And here's what we're going to do. We're going to attack this team. And they have Octros at the right wing. So I want to take Reds because Reds are both strong against Arco. And they reduce Octros' effectiveness. So I'm going to take my Red team here. Now I have to deal with the counterattack and I have to deal with the um, minions because both Arco and Papyrus make minions. This deals with minions. This does not deal with counterattack. But yeah. Counterattack is going to be a problem. And Tetashiri and, and Zenda are such a good combo because Tetashiri does a one hard hit to somebody and leaves that mark that means when they die I get 20% mana to everybody on my team. And Zenda's her follow on hit will usually kill that person and do a lot of damage to the rest of the team. Let's see. Let's look. So I do have some ability to mess around a little bit on the left side of the board.
but between huh, I don't want to have nothing for the minions but between the minions and the counterattack I would rather I think have a counter against the counterattack Minions are hefty. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna roll with this. I might learn a hard lesson in this attack, but we're gonna try it. Okay. So we got some reds. Let's take the reds before we mess them up. And we messed up our blue diamond there, but that's okay. I do want to start to charge the healer just in case. We got blues and purples there. So now we've, we're charged with blue. This purple. Let's take this purple here. Okay. We're going to heal. Attack. Move those reds into Arco. All right, we've got our reds up, and they don't have counterattack out there, so we've got those beefy minions, but. Let's see what we can do here. We really need to take out the tank. That superior dodge is annoying. Okay, probably should have held Zenda. We're really trying to get rid of the tank here. Okay, that gives us a little bit of breathing room. Now we can ghost up the middle. to bring some stuff together. Alright, we'll overheal again. Let's fire out the Zenda. Let's take this match here, keep our purples clumped up in the middle. Some purples up. Not 
really anything to dispel at this point. I guess we can probably hold on to the shot for a minute. Ah, always fires Enda too early. She has 100% mana steal if you wait that one more turn. That was a dumb mistake on my part. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to save the... Let's see if we can kill Arco with the Tetashiri and... Seshot combo. Got him. Gave us mana. This time I'm going to hold her. Let's see. She is at 50% of mana received is stolen. So I am just going to ghost a match right now. To maximize this. 75% is stolen. So we get 100% next time. Right, 100%. Okay, great. Let's do this cascade. None of them get any mana this during this cascade, so we can just charge. Now we can do this. Work on taking out Octros. See what's the mana steal at 25%. Let the fire kill Octros. He revived. Well, I was trying to prevent that cascade, but that's that's quite alright because they're all in a lot of trouble right now. And that should be it. All right, I guess dealing with the counterattack, um, that was the most important thing. In the beginning there, there's a couple of times when Sashat did her job. And so um, Obacon is a great tank. There's no doubt about it. The costume two or the costume three makes a good tank there. So <clears throat> if I had his costume, I would use it. And we got one more, so. I'm going to pause this for a second, and we'll finish this off. Okay, I am going to take <clears throat> this team right here. I have my anti-minion team with um, Zao 2, and that obviously negates Bira. Bira, her minions won't prevent me from spawning minions, but I don't have any minions on that team anyways. But they, um, they will stop the poison damage. Arco... Also makes minions, and that team has Ojima on it, which is the you know the killer on that team. It's also red, so it deals with Octros well. The only problem is Neath, so I will be trying to kill Neath as quickly as possible. Not that she's a tremendous hero, but. If she goes off, I mean, 200% damage to all enemies reduces the mana of all enemies by 20%, and all enemies get minus 35% accuracy for four turns. She is good on defense. She really messes up an attack team. So we're going to go in here. We're going to put in our... our anti-minion team, and... Let's switch this, give her the 24, give Calervo the ability to bypass, and Zautu is already, no, Zautu is average. So, mm, yeah, let's give Zautu the increased attack. Invo, yeah, that's good, let's fight. We should be good on this one. Uh, 
All right, the key to winning this is the yellows. So we are going to, hmm. Let's take this yellow match. Reds are kind of by themselves. I want to just get this red match. I don't want to charge her up, but now we're going to take this diamond just to try to clear up the board a little bit. Before I do anything crazy, I want to see if I have any other good options. I'm getting very low on both yellow and red here. Uh, I really need to clear up this board so with two healers on the left that's very passive it did give me a yellow match here I'll take advantage of that I want to set Arco off so and I want to set off uh, Barrow without killing her all right Oof, that stupid mana reduction. All right, so I think one is probably enough. With mindless attack on Octros, I don't, I don't want to know what he's got in store for us. See if one is enough to get my healer and my yeah my Ojim up. Whew, this is why I use Director Zuri. She cleansed the blind, she has a really deep heal, and now Ojima is gonna wreck this team. A minus ten stack. They're all at minus seventy percent mana generation for the rest of the match. So, let's see who's close to, oh, oops, I really don't need to overthink at this point, I'm just going to make matches because there's really nothing that the def defense can do to come back from this. I'm not going to make that red match right now because I want my minions to take the stone skin off of Arco. Now I'll make the match and do the damage. And let's see, does that kill her? It does, good. Now let's try and take out Octros. Six for six. This video went over an hour. I apologize for that, but I hope that um, hope you learned something from it. Hopefully, you enjoy it, and uh, that's it. So, I, I don't think we're gonna win this one, but we'll see what the rest of the team does. And have a good war, and I'll see you in the next video.